Hello everyone, welcome to the United Stand. What is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's best Manchester United eleven now that we've got Bruno, Fernandes and Agallo in these critical last few months of the season? I've got three formations, that's four. I've got three formations for you to go through and uh, we'll also be looking at a best eleven and a really encouraging reserve eleven that we could use over the next few weeks, especially with the Europa League and the FA Cup and etc. etc. But let's start off with Solskjaer's best eleven with the current injuries that we have to McTominay and Pogba and obviously Marcus Rashford. And the team on the left, as you can see there, is what I believe is our best eleven. Sticking to what Oli has done most of the season, which is the 4-2-3-1, you've got Williams and Wan Bissaka as your fullbacks, De Gea is obviously in goal. Maguire and Lindelof at the moment are the first choice centre backs. And then you move into that critical midfield area. Fred has been superb, so Fred obviously plays. And I think Matic, for all his critics, and I've been one of them, Matic this season has done not great, but over the last month he's been very, very important to United. And I think the protection of Fred has allowed him to to do what Matic does well, you know, not 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 imposing himself on the opposition as an attacking force, but certainly protecting his back four. And what he's also brought to his game is much quicker movement of the ball forward. Matic has always had this stigma attached to him as static Matic, and you know what, he played up to that. Sideways passes, four or five touches. He's like juggling a hot potato at times. But over the last month, we've seen an improvement in that. And I don't know whether that's someone like Carrick, who played that role very well, feeding into him, or Solskjaer, but definite improvement in the way that Matic is moving the ball. And also, you know, he's actually found a bit of form in relation to other areas. Fred's been brilliant next to him. Bruno Fernandes is an attacking midfielder. That's what he does, whether it's a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 or a diamond. You want to get Bruno Fernandes in a more advanced position, and whilst he can play in the three, this three should have him as the spearhead of that attacking option behind the, the, the strikers. So I'd play Bruno Fernandes in there. Dan James, look, I'm hoping Dan James, after a break, is going to come back on form. First three months of the season, people forget this. It's always He's not been good for the last couple of months, but the first three months of the season, he was great. You know, Pep paid 70 million, we paid 15 million, all the little memes that were on Twitter. This is true. Dan James at the start was good. He was scoring goals, but he was also putting decent crosses into the box that we were saying, why is Rashford and Martial not reading those? Unfortunately, at the moment, he's not scoring the goals. He's not putting the decent balls into the box, but he can get back to that. And I think a little bit of a break and, you know, pushing towards the Euros in the summer for Wales. Hopefully we can see Dan James back and I would put him back on the right. The big thing is Agarlo. Agarlo go up front, Martial to the left. I'm very, very eager to see this because Anthony Martial's our number nine. But there's no point in being a star player. Uh, there's no point in orchestrating people who can't play music. And I think Manchester, you know, Anthony Martial wants to be the number nine. He wants to be the orchestrator of the team in relation to, you know, I'm I'm running things, I'm getting the goals. And he can do that, but not in this team. Not without Pogba, not without Rashford. He can't do that. So I think we need something off the left. I'd push Martial to the left and I'd put Agallo through the middle. Also, it means that we get more continuity in the team. It means if Greenwood comes on, he can play. Lingard can come on and play in the front three positions. Whereas if you put Martial through the middle, where are you going to put Agarlo? He's going to have to be on the bench. So I would go with this team as our starting eleven for the moment, for the immediacy, for right now. This is our, our, my best eleven. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Um, and I think it gets the best out of Bruno. Yeah, Martial wants to play down the middle, but Agarlo can do that. And Martial's still very good off the, off the left wing. And if you look at Martial's stats... He actually produces a lot more from the left wing in relation to assists and goals than he does up front, although it is a new position. I've got no problem with Martial up front, but I just think if you're not in the game up front, we may as well get you somewhere where you can be in the game, and that's where I would go with that. Now, interestingly, if we move on to what I believe is our best 11, might be a few shocks in here, but I think our best 11 is still harks back to the 4-3-3 that we played under Solskjaer in those early days. Same back four for me again, Lindelof and Maguire, Williams, wan and then obviously De Gea in goal. But moving into the midfield area, with the return of Pogba and the return of McTominay, Pogba comes in on the left side of a midfield three with a more license to be box to box. Bruno Fernandes goes to the right side. He played this a lot for Sporting Lisbon. Those two positions are on lockdown. Yes, Pogba's going to go in the summer, but are we really going to bite our nose off to spite our face? For a player that when you look at Paul Pogba, you look at chances created, you look at assists and you look at goals. Whatever you think about Pogba, he delivers way better than anybody else. He's one of the best in the league for that. So we need Pogba in that team for a shorter period of time. He's going to be here. So what? 
with Bruno as well, we'll suddenly start to see goals, a lot more goals, because the creativity from those two in the midfield will massively, massively improve us. But who holds the midfield? Matic did it last season. I don't think Matic can hold it on his own anymore. McTominay could do it. But then if you bring McTominay in, you lose Fred. And I think Fred is absolutely tearing it up over the last two or three months. He's like, you know, he could even be our player of the year. That's no joke. So for me, Fred takes that role. Whether he can do that role, I don't know. But I certainly think Fred deserves that role. And what you're looking for from your CDM is somebody to take the ball off the back four and feed the players in front of you and cover the play. And has Fred got the defensive discipline to do it? like McTominay or Matic, I don't know. But I certainly think he deserves that role. And McTominay and Matic there can certainly cover it. But I would like to see... The other option is you go 4-2-3-1 again. Bruno's more advanced and Pogba sits in next to Fred. But for Pogba's too deep for me. I want to see this. And then as a front three, I have put Agallo back on the bench because I think Rashford, Martial, James... Look, James is, is suspect. We know that as a right-sided player. We don't know what his future is going to be. But for now, if we if everyone was fit, I would put him there. I would put Martial through the middle and I'd have Agallo on the bench. And the reason for that is, imagine Martial as a number nine with Bruno and Pogba behind him and his mate Rashford back on the left. I think suddenly you've got a team that Martial can play a number nine in. I don't think Martial can play a number nine in the current team because it's so much about holding the ball up. It's so much about physicality. You need a Jimenez. Maybe you need a Nogala. You need a Harry Kane. But that team there on my left, you don't need that. You've got so much flair and creativity around, you can play in a very different way. And that front three with all the pace that it's got and then Bruno and Pogba behind it, it's a... It's a but is it too exciting? That's what I mean. Is it? Would Oli ever go back to that? Because that's an attacking team. That's an exciting team. This season, we haven't seen Oli even hint that he wants to do that with his two holding midfielders. But I think that's our best eleven at the moment. And then finally, what I've got for you, which I think you might like, if I can find it. Here it is. This is um, a sort of a reserve eleven. You know, so you've got your best eleven there. This is a reserve eleven. And also of interest, I haven't got a place for Pereira, Lingard or Jones. And that's not out of disliking them as footballers. That was just out of, I built this team and was like, oh God, we've still got Pereira, Lingard and Jones. Which should, to me shows their surplus to requirements. And maybe they should all be sold in the summer. Because this team here is nothing. It's, non, it's got none of those. That's our best 11, I think. This is our reserve 11. So if we beat Genk 4-0 in the first Europa League tie, second leg... Do you need to play your first team? No. You could play this team and everybody gets a rest. And I think this is something that we've not really thought about as a football club. We have got depth. Has Oli used that depth? I know we've had injuries, but has he used it enough? Because if you look at this team, Romero in goal, we've used him a bit. Delo, obviously he's been injured. I accept that. Bay and Twansibi have been injured. And Luke Shaw's been injured to a certain extent. So look, we've had to play Maguire and Lindelof a hell of a lot. The same with Wambasaka. But we don't have to anymore. Moving into that midfield four, I think Jimmy Garner in a midfield four like that, with the protection of a McTominay and a Matic, and Matter ahead of him, playing with a diamond, and then Agallo and Greenwood up front, I think that's the sort of team that, look, it's probably a little bit late to be chucking it into a Derby game, Derby County in the Cup. But I certainly think in the Europa League, when we're looking to do Premier League and Europa League, then you've got to utilise some of these players on the left. Will we ever see that as an 11? As I said, I think it's great to know we've got that 11. Obviously, I think Oli would still be using Pereira and Lingard. I personally wouldn't. I think Garner deserves a chance. And I think you've got Mata, who in a reserve 11 probably could do a quite jo good job. McTamney and Matic want to be first teamers. But if they can't be in there, then they can play in this team as well. And as I said, I think it's only going to really be specific to Europa League ties where maybe we get the first leg done and, you know, Maybe it's not going to work, but what I, want to, what I wanted to show was that actually that 11 is not that 11. And that just shows that if we can get these players back, we've got a squad. And Rashford's probably not going to be back till the end of the season. And who knows what's happening with Pogba. But there is depth there. It is the, look, having two teams, not many Premier League clubs can do that. Are either of those two teams good enough to get top four? No. Is that squad top four? No. But we might. We might be able to do it. We might be able to do it. Anyway, smash a like on the video. Get your comments in below. Do you agree with me on formations, on best 11s? As I said, that's my best 11 if everybody's fit. That's my best 11 as things stand. I think Martial has to move to the left so that we can get a Galo in. 
and start to get, we need something in that front three. At the moment, it's so disjointed, it's so lopsided, it's so lacking form. We need to rev revolutionise this team. And I think Matic back next to Fred gives us a platform. Bruno with freedom behind three players that, look, I like Martial at number nine, but I think at the moment he needs to go to the left. Thanks everyone for watching. Back again, live at eight o'clock. Get your thoughts, smash a like, I'll speak to you soon.